Joining us now on the phone with reaction to tonight's results out of South Carolina uh, and Nevada, former Speaker of the House. He won South Carolina four years ago. Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich, uh, your thoughts about tonight? Well, first of all, it is a huge night for Donald Trump, and nobody should kid themselves. Here's a guy who seven months ago, for the first time, entered electoral politics, has learned at an extraordinary rate, uh, did, came in second in Iowa, which is a very tough environment for him, with a caucus turnout project, uh, won New Hampshire decisively, won South Carolina decisively. And by any reasonable standard, this is a decisive victory. He's going to win. If you look at the numbers in Nevada right now, and the fact they only have a few days to turn it around, he's going to win Nevada. Now, at that point, somebody in the establishment, I've been listening with amusement <laughs> to the conversation you're having. You and I you know, must be truth. thinking the same thing. I'm like, yeah. have, you, mean, been, have guys, you been listening? If you add this to this to this, oh, then, then you might be Trump. It's hilarious. No, I mean, what people need to get, get a grip on in the Washington establishment is their job is to understand Trump. His job isn't to understand them. Uh, Boy, that's, they live in, that's they, really they well live, said. You know, they live in a world of ideas and details and policy programs and long papers and, you know, conferences on ideas. This guy lives in a world of making very big decisions, doing very big things. Uh, you know, and I think he could start keeping a list. Will there be a wall and how soon? Will he, in fact, have gotten through a dramatic change in health care and how soon? Will he, in fact, rethink our policy in the Middle East and how soon? But these are future oriented, and that's the base of his support, is people who are sick and tired of the, the day-to-day -day baloney that has, that has dominated American politics. Uh, and, and, and it's also a very simple rule. If you think Washington's so sick you want someone to kick over the table, then you like Donald Trump and you frankly don't care about the details. And remember, between Trump, Cruz, and Carson, 62 percent of South Carolina Republicans voted for very dramatic change. M Mr. Speaker, let me ask you this, because I, I watch with amusement, and maybe I'll even add the word a little bit of frustration tonight, because I was watching people with their, you know, and I was flipping channels all over the place, like, like a lot of us do in the news business, and I'm watching this person say, well, if you add this person's numbers to that person's numbers to this person's numbers, then you might have, be in a position where Trump's really in trouble now, and I'd be very worried if, if I'm Donald Trump at this point, and I'm thinking, he just won South Carolina by a huge margin. He just won, you know, North New Hampshire but, but, by a huge margin. Let me give you a simple analogy. As, as you know, Chris and I are big Green Bay fans and actually own one share of stock. Now, if we could have borrowed the Denver <laughs> defense for that game at Arizona, Green Bay could yeah. have gotten into the playoffs. And if we they would have won the borrowed, Super Bowl. We would have won yeah. the Super Bowl. I mean, these guys, who, first of all, if Carson drops out, at least half his vote's going to go to Trump. Second, you don't know today, because this is, a, and I, I can't overstate this, because you and I both have talked to Trump, and we've watched him, and, and we've been pretty tough with him. Um, this is a guy who's learning every 24 hours. He's not the same person today he was yesterday. By the time he let, get, gets through the speech in Atlanta tomorrow, uh, where my, my dear friend Rennie Casey is helping organize it, and she's a remarkably sophisticated woman. When she came out for Trump, I began to realize, this guy's got something going that's different. Then he's going to go to Nevada. He will be a slightly more mature, more thoughtful person by the time he lands in Nevada. And that's what people don't get. This is a serious man yeah. who has done serious things. He has, for seven months now, tried to figure out how to be president of the United States. And he keeps growing. You know, it's not that he's changing in, in, a, in, a, in a shallow sense of three consultants telling him what to dump. It's a very interesting guy trying to really understand a very complicated I think job. That, I, th I think that is a, a, probably the m most, I think the most honest analysis I've heard. You actually said something very early in the process, and you said it both on my radio show and right here on the Fox News channel, that if you want to know who Donald Trump is, read The Art of the Deal. You get some insight into his mindset. So here's my question for you. Going into Nevada, going into Super Tuesday, if you were to talk to him on the phone tonight and say, great job, but I would advise you to make these three minor tweaks, what would you tell him? I tell him, first of all, change nothing between now and Nevada because it's too short a time. Hold every possible rally in Nevada you can get to and go to every small town you can get to where they never see a candidate. And you'll win Nevada on a huge margin, and that gives you a boost. Then take a deep breath, 
take 24 hours off the campaign trail and think about being a potential president rather than a potential candidate. And he will he will begin to grow into a job vastly more humbling and vastly more challenging than anything he has ever dreamed of. Last question. What would you say both and, and Donald Trump acknowledged tonight, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio had good nights tonight. What would you say to them in the in the great nights? What would you say to them in the in the 30 seconds you have left? Marco needs to wrap up the entire establishment, become the, the practical alternative to the insurgency, and continue to communicate. And I thought he did a wonderful job tonight, pulling together uh, the fact you have an African American senator, an Indian American governor, uh, a Latino uh, presidential candidate. This is not the party the Democrats used to run against. And then second, I'd say to Cruz. He is right at the edge of breaking through. He, he has got to be a cheerful warrior. I saw him today at, at the Judge Justice Scalia's funeral. Uh, I think he and Heidi, in fact, are enjoying this experience. And they've got to be a cheerful warrior and go on. It's a tough business. But after all, he's now one of three. I mean, there are only three plausible yeah. nominees. That's a pretty big achievement for a guy who's 45 years old. I think actually, for, is he 44 or 45? I'm not sure. I thought, but, I thought he made a birthday. Yeah. Okay, so he's 44. Right, I mean, he, no, 44, I don't know. Uh, anyway, Mr. Speaker, uh, great counsel advice as always. Thank you for being with us.